My name is Melissa Terrace. I am a professor at the University of Edinburgh, but prior to that I was a professor at the University of London where I was leading the UCL Centre for Digital Humanities and I became involved with the Transcribe Bentham project right at the start. So that was nine years ago that um, we first put the project together and I have been part of the project from the beginning and I've also I've continued my involvement with the project even though I moved institutions two years ago. But we joke about, you know, a transcript Bentham is the gift that keeps on giving and it seems to be this, like, this project which has grown legs and has ticked along and, and we're now in a stage where we have to, the big challenge is keeping it going now. We've been live for nearly nine years. So it was funded for six months or so before it went live. We had a very aggressive development schedule right at the start because it was a one-year project to build a platform, get it live, get it tested, see if it worked, get some stuff digitised, you know, that was the funding and we did it. And the last round of grant funding finished a week ago and we have eight years now if we, of keeping it in steady state if we want to finish the project. And it's no longer new, it's no longer a cool thing, yes there's research that we will hopefully continue to publish about it. We've just published a paper about the economics of crowdsourcing and how you do the costings for it and the break-even points and what it actually means to build a platform like this and uh, as opposed to just paying RAs to do the transcription and you know we've been looking at the stats and the throughput and, and we've we had to phone one of our funders we had to keep very very good stats on everything and so that gave us the means by which we could interrogate them and make these quite nice models about uh, how all that was working out so that's been useful we'll continue to publish these kind of things so it's still a research project but it's not the research project it was 10 years ago which was a new idea so funding councils are not terribly interested we're now being funded by the AHRC by the Mellon and also the EU. So we've kind of exhausted our funding, external funding. But this is a hugely important project for the institution. And it's up to the institution then to go, is it worth to support the person at the back end? So these are live conversations that we're having right now. And we'll see. Well, the major unexpected one, and I should have thought this before, but actually what we were building when we had high resolution images and then high quality transcripts on scale. So by the time we got to 100,000 images with 100,000 transcripts, that is actually a training set for artificial intelligence. So, and that's really computationally what we did. We built the world's most high quality training set for handwriting recognition technology pointed to modern manuscripts or late modern manuscripts um, and we hadn't really considered it at the time we were just wanting to digitize the manuscripts and get the transcripts and it was at that point about eight years ago that we were approached by the handwriting recognition technology community and they went do you want to play like and we were just coming to the end of our second grant or, and we needed to find the mechanisms to fund Transcribe Bentham and it was looking like we were going to have to shut the whole thing down because we needed to keep the pers the people involved, the moderator involved. So it was actually our involvement with the handwriting recognition technology community and contributing to the development of a, it was two EU funded projects, Read and then or Transcribe as then Read, um, which has produced a bit of technology that does pretty accurate handwriting recognition and that was the, that's been a big surprise and it's been joyful right we've been part of then this eight year program into artificial intelligence and machine learning and our volunteers when they're transcribing Bentham's handwriting are helping feed the accuracy of the models that we can build to read other people's handwriting automatically so 
My one piece of advice would be that that relationship between the volunteers and the project it should be a sacred one and it should be a respectful one and you have to build that respectful state, state where you're operating in a way where you're appreciative of the intellectual and emotional labour that goes into people contributing their free time to help with something which, you know, isn't a economic growth project, it's, it's something for social good rather than something which might be, you know, we're not curing cancer with transcribed benthin, but there is a social benefit to it. And so we have to consider the free labour that's going in and we have to be respectful of that. And it's not that I, I think we underestimated that. We did set up Transcribed Bentham as a research project to investigate all of this stuff. And that's one of the major findings that you really need to build in the time to navigate the relationship with your users if your project's going to succeed. So that's been our, our, one of the learning outcomes for us. Uh, it is one of the stories of interdisciplinary digital humanities research that a, the project's a success but also the benefit to me in working with that diverse community that might I have learned and the opportunities I have. It's been, it's been fantastic and I'm very appreciative of it.